Alrighty, Uranus and Scorpio. This transit was um, roughly from the end of 1974 to the end of 1981, and has a very special place in uh, the pantheon of, of the last 50 or so years. Uh, Neptune and Scorpio was basically about like 57 to, I want to say like late 60s, sometime around there, and you guys are building off of the achievements of that um, of that generation, as well as taking their knowledge, their understanding, their those energies, you're taking it forward. Uranus and Scorpio is a very powerful energy. It's said to be exalted in astrology. And even, you know, it, it should be said, um, positive energies have their drawbacks, their challenges, stuff to work on. And, um, and as well as negative energies have their gifts. But you guys really do, are, you're just more in tune with your emotional depths than, uh, than really any generation of the last 60 years. Indeed, Neptune and Scorpio, the generation preceding you guys, can be very lost when it comes to their inner depths. Now, the wisest of, of that generation are absolutely in tune with those and have so much to teach you. And so I, I advise you to really keep an eye open in your life for uh, individuals of that generation that are really in their presence, that have delved in to their their emotional depths, whether it's through meditation, it's through exploration of consciousness, through drugs, through sex, whatever. There's a lot to learn from that generation. And what's really cool is um, you guys are, are now teaching, I've always been teaching really, my generation, which is Pluto and Scorpio. And uh, I think that was like 1984 to about like 80 to 95, something like that. But... um yeah, it's really cool. In the last 50, 60 years, the outer planets have all been in Scorpio, and we've all been building off of each other's accomplishments, pushing it even further and further forward. You guys are incredibly powerful. In fact, that is one of the most important things about this placement. You guys are more in your emotional presence. You're brave. You're more courageous when it comes to plumbing your emotional depths than really any generation that I can even think of this last century. Um, really, the only people that could give you a run for your money on that is, is my generation, Pluto and Scorpio. But again, we all are here for a reason. There is no energy that is better than another or anything like that, which is something that's really important to, to, to keep in mind. Because with Scorpio energy, at the lower levels, it's all about power. Well, it's all about power in general. But at the higher levels, you're using power for good, for development of yourself and others in this world lower level power, and unfortunately that's one of the big challenges with this placement, is uh, personal power. I'm going to get power over this individual. I'm going to get power over these people. I'm going to be able to do this and all that stuff. Um, so that is the challenge, really. And that's that's a pretty decent challenge considering the great gifts you're getting with Uranus and Scorpio of of psychic ability beyond generations before you, of... of even dreamed of experiencing um, bravery as per sex. You guys have broken more taboos with uh, in regards to sex and sexual relations than any other generation that has come before. Even you know, say the flower children in the '60s and whatnot. Um, Uranus and Scorpio is taking that step further. And again, generation before you, and you're teaching Neptune and Scorpio as well. But especially my generation, Pluto and Scorpio. We're we are taking notes. We're going ah okay okay okay. Your guys is just frankness with sexuality, with, with emotions in general. And we're not talking about just any emotions, but deep-seated emotions. Um, as per magic and occult studies, spirituality through, uh, through depth of emotions. You guys are masters of that. And um, as you develop in this, in this life and as you grow older and mature, you're going to tap into more and more of this power. Again... It's up to you to use that power for positive ends. You can try and cheat the universe if you want and collect all of this, you know, wisdom and emotional depth and power and whatnot for your own being, for your only your own sake. But karma, you can't get away from karma. It doesn't matter how much power you have or you think you have. At the end of the day, it's cause and effect. And if you put out selfish, negative energies into the world, they're going to come back to you tenfold or threefold or how, I don't, whatever the, I think it's law of threes or something like that. But essentially, it's going to come back to you. Because that's just how life works. You know, it's all about cycles. And um, what we put out comes back to us. 
So it's really important that you delve deep into your emotions and that you don't get caught in the lower levels of Scorpio, that you continually rise and you continually rebirth. Indeed, that's also one of the greatest gifts with this, with this placement, is your ability to rebirth, your ability to go into your emotions, exercise your, your demons, and to be stronger as a result, to turn suffering and pain into strength and purpose. And uh, once you comp accomplish this for yourself, you're then able to do it for other people. And that's one of the most admirable things about this placement is you guys are so wonderfully psychic when you tune into it. When you let go of the fears and the, the strangeness of the generation before you, again, Neptune and Scorpio, a lot of that, that generation began the journey that you are now fully embarking upon in this life. They They, you know, maybe smoked pot here or there. They maybe tried acid if they're really advanced and whatnot. Um, but ultimately, their consciousness, their search of consciousness and depths of consciousness and seeking to understand that um, didn't quite go as deep as it, as it could have. It didn't go quite as deep as Uranus and Scorpio is capable of. And um, again, I don't mean to generalize. There are certainly those of the, that, in that generation that uh, I've absolutely in incredibly explored the emotional depths and totally charted out new vistas of consciousness but don't look to them for your own growth your own moving forward and uh for that matter don't look to to the generation after you of, of pluto and scorpio either it's important to ultimately decide life for yourself because you're in scorpio you guys really are you're so much more powerful than uh, in so many ways than uh, the other Uranian ger generations and certainly the ones before you, Libra, Virgo and the ones after you, Sag and my own of Capricorn even with my Pluto and Scorpio I recognize that you guys have gifts, emotional genius and understanding that as Uranus and Capricorn I can't tap into and uh, it's really fascinating I I've noticed with your guys' generation being caught uh, in the uh, context that you are of the generations that came before you as well as those that uh, followed you that it's very important for you guys generation to not worry so much about acceptance and uh, social acceptance in general again mitigate that need for power I'm not saying just go and run havoc and you know uh, be self-centered to the point of detriment but it is important to base your power your genius on your own understanding of the world even among other members of your generation there will not be consensus there will not be understanding of what's the best way to move forward you're gonna need to follow your own instinct and you're born to follow your own instinct with this energy and uh, once you do you accomplish amazing psychic gifts you really do and you're teaching all of us of all the different generations as well as those of your own generation of how to live more purposefully healthily and also more freely. Again, what's beautiful is you have that depth of character, that depth of, of emotional perception. So you can tap into all this really cool psychic abilities, understanding of just life itself. At the same time, you can also live it up to the fullest. You can embrace sex. It's so, so, so healing. You guys' work, even up until this point, and it's just going to get even more healing as you grow into your more, uh, your higher stages of power. But um, it's you guys have done wonders to make this world more sexually healthy, because you have not you, you're not afraid to go and express sex. Porn stars from you guys' generation is, are incredible, and again, my generation are taking notes, going, "Jesus Christ, I didn't even know you could do that." <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, whether you're on screen or, or in the bedroom or whatever, also sex is a huge part for you guys, and it really does contribute to your genius. Your Uranus is the planet of genius, of evolution, of moving forward and um, of progression and with Scorpio Scorpio again is all about the, the depths the, the psychic abilities yes and also very much about sex sex is one of the most intimate acts in fact I would say probably the most uh, arguably the most intimate act here on earth I guess you know maybe birth is involved with that or, or I guess I can't really think of, any, of anything else that would be as intimate and, but even then of course birth is not as intimate as sex so. In so many ways. 
explore that. Explore that, explore that, explore that. You need to for your own benefit and also for the world's benefit. Again, even up until this point, uh, I want to say at the making of this video, you guys are about, what? Okay, so 74. You guys are 40 now? 40 and less, so like, like 30, 33 to 40, some, somewhere around that. seems right. Uh, yeah, something like that. But in any case, already, take it from somebody of Pluto and Scorpio, you guys have evolutionized the world's sexuality. You've moved it forward so much and healed so much. Don't listen to other other generations' puritanistic bullshit, whether it's um, really low-level Uranus and, and Virgo, you know, two generations before you guys, um, who are like, oh my god, I can't believe, you know, rah, rah, this who are just so stuffy about sex and whatnot. Uh, or the, the one right after that of Uranus and Libra who just have already very, uh, they're just, uh, we won't even go there, but totally different, totally different energy is the point, is, um, don't listen to any other generation's understanding of sex, and again, even with your own generation, there will be people who are still lower level, who have not reconciled sex's importance and place in their life, and so we'll look at it as, who knows, dirty, or immoral or something very negative when in fact it's just a very much a natural part of our being of, of being human and um, it's not even just a biological or body thing again it's one of the most uh, arguably is the most intimate act out there and it's such an interweaving experience you are sharing your deepest self you're being the most vulnerable even if you try and, and, you know, say you subscribe to the macho view of sex, of, oh, emotions don't belong inside. You can try and separate emotions from sex, but you really can't. Um, again, some people treat sex a lot more lightly, but at the end of the day, there is a depth of sex in that experience, in that emotional combination of two individuals that should not be treated lightly, but even more importantly, should be explored and used and utilized and understood. You know, having a conscious partner, especially the same generation of Uranus and Scorpio, do sex magic with you, of essentially setting an intention. We have such, because of, of Christian, um, well, I'm not saying so much Christian, but just monotheistic uh, persecution over the last 2,000 years, we've gotten such strange portrayals of what magic is and essentially magic is just tuning into nature tuning into our own nature being a representative of nature being a part of nature um it's it's all about harmony about nature and intention being conscious creators we are able to put forth intention into nature and to bring a result out of it it's a positive process it's not a negative process that's to me not true magic I guess you could say it's black magic or whatever there's there's other terms for it but if you really want to have good healthy sustainable magic you have to have good healthy intentions and you also have to have a, a some kind of a vehicle you know a ceremony a ritual a whatever and it doesn't have to be some elaborate you know like in the church there's all those ridiculous rituals and stuff um, Sex is one of the best rituals, in fact, for this, and especially for you guys' generation, to, to accomplish things. And you can, accompl you can approach it however you wish. You know, if you and your partner uh, want to do sex magic for uh, a materialistic aim, such as money, great. If you want to do it for a more spiritualistic aim, and in fact, this would probably be the best to, to bring out the best out of both of you, awesome. Um... Just whatever it is, make sure that you're throwing your full self behind it. That's one of your great, your guys' great gifts and great challenges with Uranus and Scorpio is your intensity. You guys can get so wrapped up into what you're doing, which is a beautiful gift when you're, your priorities are straight, when you're not going after personal power, when you're really focused on on just bringing out the best and, and the, the highest form of power in yourself, which will then benefit the world. Us at our most fulfilled, at our, our most powerful, is when we're helping the world the most. 
because we're not focused on our own. You can't focus on your own selfish interests and help the world on unwired. It just doesn't work that way. You can try. You can get lost in the ego and say, I'm going to be the best fill in the blank here. And I'm going to be better than fill in the blank here. And you will not reach 